Look who's here, Tony Bellew, Dave Colwell. Really good to see you guys. Huge congratulations, Tony. Thank you. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm over the pain now. The pain is, uh, is gone. My hand's still a mess, but you know, it is what it is. It's uh, the spoils of war, shall we say. Have you kind of come down yet, or is it, is it still a bit of a blur? It seems a little bit more real. Well, it seemed a lot more real when I jumped off the train uh, coming down here and a whole Mobbed. school class of <laughs> school girls knew who I was. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. And like, they just all had the phones. And I, they looked at me and said, as I got off, there was, there was literally must have been 40 young school girls. And I thought, is there someone behind me? Who are these waiting for? And I looked <laughs> behind me and there was no one there. And I thought, hello? Uh, I, I thought, in the first thing, well, how do these even know who I am? Uh, but well, I think the teacher must have told them. Uh, and then awesome. the pitch is just nuts. Same happened to you, Dave? Not quite to that extent, but <laughs> yeah, it's um it has been it's been crazy since the fight. You know, everybody it just seems that like everybody's seen it, everybody's talking about it. it. It was a massive event and it was a great night. It certainly was a, a huge night, a massive night, fantastic to watch. It, it's been a tough couple of months, hasn't it, for you though? You've really? had a yeah, up and down, high profile losses to Gavin McDonald mm. and David Price. So, did that make Saturday all the more sweeter? How satisfying was it for you? Do you know what it is? Each each fighter's career is individual, and and you know what it means to that individual. And I've always said in the build-ups, you know, regardless of, of of us being in the same camp, no fighter thinks about a campmate's loss or a win going mm. into their own fight. It doesn't make any difference to their own performance. But with the pressure of of however we was going on, you know. Um, yeah, it did. It did. But you know, it was a it was a massive, massive stage for Tony to break out there because obviously he's, he's won the WBC, and that was huge. But this was um, a completely different level when it comes down to crossover appeal and and you know just your average Joe blogs watching on the street. You know, so it was a it was a massive event and it was a great night. Well, let, let's just rewind, Tony. Let's start at the beginning. You're about, you're about to ring walk, mm. and then someone throws a pint <laughs> over you. Yeah, there was a pint of what, ale. Uh, what went through your mind then? I mean, Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't really like the taste of beer, to be honest, so I wasn't uh, one to try and taste it, but it, it happens. You know, it's, it's people who have had too much to drink, but ultimately I said thanks because he paid the fee to come in and watch, so I'm not saying everyone should throw a pint of ale on me who comes and pays to watch, but, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, there's no hard feelings from my part. I was so focused and so in the zone, Nothing was going to take take my mind away from the, the task ahead. What about the atmosphere? I mean, it, it was huge, wasn't it? Yeah. Incredible yeah. atmosphere. Walking at first, I heard a lot of boos. Uh, and I expected them. I'm in his backyard. Uh, what, does that bother you? What, no, it just, it just like I say, my mind was so focused and I was so tunnel vision on, on what I had to do when I got in the ring. And I didn't want to waste any nervous energy getting pent up and angry and and all this, you know, snarling or the growling. So when he made his walk, and I'd done my walk, the great Zed Cars played again for me, as always. When he'd done his walk, I really like his style of music, and well, I like all types of music. Oh, I, I know what you're going to talk about now. Yeah. The dancing in the ring. Yeah. How good was that? So I just <laughs> thought, I might as well stay relaxed, and I thought I was just bopping away, and the moves were coming, and then I just thought, OK, well, you know what, I'm not bothered, you know, laugh at me, do whatever you want, but I needed to stay relaxed and calm, and the best way of doing that for me was, I could have, there's been fights where I've stood in the middle of the ring, waited for fights, and just stared at them for mm. the whole, for the whole, every, all of the introductions, everything. So was this kind of, was this pre-planned? Were you going to do something different this time? I was, it wasn't pre-planned, no, I just, I thought, don't get angry and don't match him, because he was trying to snarl and intimidate me, even right up to the belly, he was mm. trying to intimidate me. And he actually, we, our eyes met, and I'm dancing, and he looked at me, and I just laughed at him. And it, it broke his, his, this, this image he was trying to give across, because he smiled back, he just laughed, and I knew that's the one thing he didn't want to do, he didn't want to smile. In his mind, he was like, seek and destroy, that's what was going to his mind, it was destruction time. And when I laughed at him and smiled and said, we're here, he just, he laughed back, and, and I knew that's the last thing he wanted to do, so... Uh, it kind of worked in my favour. OK, Dave, let's talk about the early rounds. What did you make of Tony? I thought, it was, I thought it was fantastic. His his mentality allowed him to do what we've been working on in the gym, day in, day out, day in, day out. I wasn't interested in winning the early rounds. I've said that to him beforehand. Um, the main thing was to get David A missing, making him fall short, 
start having doubts in himself. And when you see the opportunities, then go, but make sure you think you're always thinking about what's coming back. And, you know, it, it, it did that. His feet were great. And in fact, after the first round, he came back to the corner. And I was genuinely happy. And, I, and I, I, from that moment on, all the way through the fight, my only concern was that he'd get careless, get, you know, switch off and walk on something, give him an opportunity, you know? And that was, that was, that was what I was reminded you of. You know, even, even talking about things like previous opponents of David A, where they think they're going to win the fight, they rush too early, walk onto a shot, and, and it turns the course mm. of a fight. Mm. Tony, talk to me about David's injury and your emotions at, at that point. What was going through your mind? I remember you saying on Saturday you, you didn't notice at first. Or you... No, I didn't know. When I, the fight was actually taking place, I had no idea he was injured whatsoever. I just thought he was tiring by the round, by the round, and that's why if I actually knew he was injured the way he was, I'd have really put my foot on the gas immediately and not stopped. But I just thought he's tiring, and that's how he looked, as if he was tiring. So, in the early rounds, he was so explosive. He was very, he was very dangerous, very powerful. He hit me with his best he had. Everyone mm. is forgetting this. That all everyone's going about. So, well, he was injured. He had one leg. Well, let me just tell you, he had two fine legs and two very fine hands for the first four rounds. And then all of a sudden, in the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth, when the punches start coming back, he incurs an injury. Well, I incurred an injury in the first round, and then I felt it in the second round. It happens. It's boxing. Okay, yeah, it did. It, it, you know, it didn't help with his game plan. But anyone who knows boxing knows I didn't lose all them early rounds. I thought I won the first round. I thought I did lose a few of them, yeah, because I was sticking to a game plan. My game plan was never to go out there and look great in the early part of this fight. My game plan was never to look great in any part of this fight. My game plan was just to nullify what he does well and make him reach, make him miss. Make him pay when he gives when he leaves himself open, and I made him pay time and time again. The little body shots underneath, the clips around the side of the head. When we got close, rough him up a little bit. It it just all got too much for David in there, and then in the end, he overreached, he overstretched, and the the Achilles went the way it did. But never once did I go, oh, his Achilles is gone. That just didn't enter my mind. The only thing that entered my mind was he's hurt or he's feeling it. If people want to look back. Watch the end of the fifth round. Before anything's wrong with his Achilles, at the end of the fifth round, the bell goes and I say to him, you are blowing out your backside. It's over for you now. And they were the words I said to him. People can look back at the video, you clearly see me say it to him, and he just looks at me in amazement and shakes his head. He knew at the end of that fifth round he was done for. It didn't matter what happened. I was ready for the best David Hay. I was prepared for the biggest punching heavyweight in the world. And my mental mindset allowed me to be able to cope with it and deal with it. He was prepared for a two-round blowout. And when that didn't happen, his mind was lost. He, he just he lost it. And that's just the way it went. Well, you know what the question is on everyone's lips now? Mm. What is next for Tony Belli? Is there going to be a rematch? Tyson Fury? White? Parker? <laughs> Uh, well, one thing I will say is I'm not going to entertain anybody who got knocked out in a British domestic level fight. So, you know, I've just beat the most dangerous heavyweight in the world. Uh, let's all remember, on Friday afternoon, David Hay was the bogeyman of the heavyweight division. Nobody in the heavyweight division said his name. None of the champions said his name. It took a, a fat cruiserweight to do what he'd done to him. Uh, my next move, I'll be totally honest, I don't know. I really don't know. Is it going to be in the ring? Possibly, but possibly not to. I'd be a fool to, to, to say, to, well, I'd be a liar to say I knew exactly right now what I'm going to do because I really don't. Uh, it, it, it is what it is, you know. These, I'm wanted. Why? I've seen a silly comment get made. Why am I going to have a final world title eliminator when every champion wants to face me? <laughs> it just makes no sense. It's crazy. Uh, Deontay Wilder, brilliant world champion. Our very own Anthony Joshua, fantastic world champion. Joseph Parker, good solid world champion. Out of all them world champions, not one of them has a name like David Hay on the record. Only I have that. So, you know, what does that make me? I don't know. What does that say about my next move? I'm not sure. But we'll see. You know, I'll take the time to reflect on it. And when I do make a decision, it will be the right decision 
for me and my family. It won't be the right decision for David Hay. It won't be the right decision for Deontay Wilder. It will be the right decision for me and my family. And that's the most important thing here. David's itching to say something. <laughs> yeah. No. no. <laughs> my, what I want, what I would love him to do, and I've told him this already, is I'd love him to walk away. I'd love him to retire. You know, we, we, when we got together at the start of his Cruiserweight campaign, it was all about winning the, the world title at Cruiserweight. We did that. You know, at Goodison, that was the dream. That was on. This, this was a bonus round, you know, and he's beaten a, a, a massive name on the world stage in David A. And for me, and stepping up to heavyweight and do it, and, and for me, I would like him to walk away now. I understand the lure of fighting for an heavyweight championship of the world. That's yeah. something that, you know, even he wouldn't have ever dreamed of doing, you know, from his days at light heavyweight. You know, you, you couldn't imagine him boxing for an heavyweight world title. But for me, I would, I would you know, I, I would like him to walk away. He's, he's, he's set his, his family's life up, you know, and, and he's achieved everything that he could, and more what he could have dreamed of. So I would like him to walk away. But I understand if he wants one, one more. But for me, if, if he does fight again, it has to be one more and that's it. Well, there you go. Dave, Tony, enjoy the moment. That's all I'm going to say. Thank and you. thank you very much, much for coming on the show today. Thank you very much. Enjoy Sky Sports Live. On all screens, on the go, and the best bits on demand.